Nick Tracy accompanied his wife Annie to the party. He didn't want to go there, and he didn't want her to go, but she insisted. The party took place at the estate of famous football midfielder Mike White. White is 34 years old and retired after leading his team to the Super Bowl last year. He was large, blonde, and rich, made his fortune by wisely investing money from sponsors under Annie's company, and more recently, under Annie herself. Annie is a financial expert and works for Bragg Incorporated. The company works with many athletes and celebrities. Annie is 30. She is a stunning blonde beauty, and Nick considered himself lucky to have won her over and married her in college eight years ago. Their son Travis is seven years old and looks just like his father. Nick is almost six feet tall and has a medium build. He looks good-natured, but that's not true. He wasn't always this big. As a child, he was always the smallest and poorest child. His father, Greg, was a sergeant in the Army and served at the same base throughout Nick's life. Nick was an only child, and his mother, Nora, was a housewife. She was a second-generation Vietnamese. This slightly aggravated Nick's problem with his neighbors. Nora was an excellent mother, but sitting at home, she could not protect Nick from the big boys. For a while, Nick's only defense was running. He was good at it, but when he was seven, he lost the race. He returned home beaten. His father talked to him about it and then sent Nick to a family friend, Jojo Nolan. At Jojo's dojo, Nick learned to fight. Jojo did not call it the euphemistic word self-defense, but simply a fight. Nick turned out to be a born fighter. Almost endless resentment and even hatred seethed within him. Jojo's job was to channel these traits and keep them from popping up at the wrong time. In terms of technique, Nick was strong and fast, although small. He went to Jojo's dojo four days a week, including Sunday. This was his church, and wrestling was his religion. Greg and Nora were a little hesitant about whether Nick should attend the dojo. But in addition to being fast and strong, Nick was also smart. He never got less than an A in any subject. I honestly told my parents that about much of his work in the dojo involves controlling his emotions. This is exactly what Jojo told Greg, without mentioning that controlling emotions allows you to fight much more effectively. An emotional blow will most likely be sweeping and careless. But to cause maximum damage, it must be precise. The same goes for a kick or head strike. One day, when he was nine, in an alley near school, Nick kicked the ass of a bigger, older kid. Literally kicked it. But he was able to contain his rage. The child was hurt, but nothing serious. And after that, Nick was no longer a target. It's amazing how rumors spread around school. At 16, Nick gained height, and at 17, he gained strength. This process made him slightly less dexterous, but Jojo was able to handle it. At 18, out of high school, Nick was deadly. Thanks to excellent grades, Nick entered the local university at public expense. He studied mathematics and computers and majored in business. It was in business classes during his junior year and senior year that he met and became attracted to Annie. They liked each other immediately, at first due to their obvious intelligence and common interests, but soon an intimate relationship arose between them. They were completely sexually compatible. Annie is an adventurer and explorer, and so is Nick. They were always looking for ways to make life interesting, but none of these ways involved anyone else. Well, not really. Sometimes Nick wanted Annie to be actress Jamie Lee Curtis, his favorite fantasy, from the film Blue Steel. Sometimes he could be Annie's flavor of the month, but they both made it clear that fantasy is all there is to it. When they agreed to get married, they wrote it down and signed it. This was not a marriage contract, but a solemn promise. After graduating from school, Annie immediately began to earn a lot. She was as smart as Nick. Well, almost as smart. Her career at Bragg was only slightly delayed by the birth of Travis. Nick worked at a local company doing computer programming. He could work from home. So after two months, Nick became Travis's primary caregiver. Nick also observed Annie's work. He was interested in her. Having received a good bonus for the program he wrote, he invested it in a startup found on Annie's list of promising projects. 
The magnetism startup was actually making money. Three guys offered to gather dating information to bring singles together, and also other people. It was a promise, and it worked out well. Nick made a lot of money from the startup's initial public offering, and then retired. It seemed to him that the time to exploit the idea was running out, and others would soon copy it. He told Annie about this. She thought about it and asked her clients to also leave the game. This, the exit of her clients, marked the beginning of magnetism's downfall. Nick made a short sale, perhaps illegal, perhaps not. Nick now had a large amount of money to invest. He didn't tell Annie about all this. Five years have passed since their marriage, and lately Nick has been alarmed by her behavior. She spent less time with the family, so he kept quiet about his business successes. He registered a company and received a salary from it, and quit his job and started his own business, programming for various government agencies. The job was restricted, and he had to get clearance. He got it, and he got access to information about himself in the clearance. The section on Annie was revealing. Now she was a major player in her company and earned much more than Nick had expected. Nick checked where the money was and discovered that it was in an investment account at her company. Not illegal, everything is in the public domain, but Annie didn't mention it at home. She contributed to a joint account and they filed taxes separately. But although Annie was a financial expert, she paid little attention to her computer. I just wasn't interested in technology other than as an investment. Therefore, her life was an open book for Nick. He avoided delving too deeply into her affairs, on work matters, but having discovered the investment account, he thoroughly searched her laptop and a new mobile phone. There were plans for her work. Nick's observation of Annie's technique did not raise any suspicions that she was walking, and that was precisely what Nick was interested in. Instead, she seemed engrossed in her work and the celebrities she and her company represented. The two of them went to parties thrown by actors, basketball players, baseball players, singers, and just rich people. These parties happened about five or six times a year, and Nick usually enjoyed it, even if Annie forgot about it once she got to the venue. But she always went home with him and never disappeared long enough to arouse suspicion. Their sex life was almost as great as ever. Almost. Sometimes Nick felt like she was somewhere else. He felt this way maybe once a month. This was one of the reasons he decided to check on her more often. But in the end, I decided that she was absent solely for work. Everything went as usual until she got Mike White as a client. White was married to actress Jill Slayton. She was a beauty, and they had two daughters, six and eight years old. Annie's predecessor was Jake Blake. He was a rake and got into trouble by having the Whites as clients and making a determined attempt to seduce Jill Slayton. Jake didn't succeed completely, but she was seduced to such an extent that Mike noticed. So Jake went elsewhere, and Annie got his job. Part of the reason she got it was because she was a woman and Mike asked for it. She didn't know that Mike was asking for her specifically. When Annie got White as a client, she began to spend even more time at work. She also went with Mike White and Jill to lunch. Jill knew that Mike had specifically asked that Annie handle his investments, so I went to lunch with them just to see what was what. Surprisingly, she wasn't completely against Mike having sex with Annie. She herself wanted to go to bed with her co-star in the film she was soon to star in. I thought that if Mike fucked Annie, he wouldn't be able to complain about her and Dirk Madden unless it was too public. At lunch, she saw that Mike was very, very interested in Annie. He tried to act businesslike, but she knew him very well. Annie didn't know. Jill even wondered if Annie would give in to Mike. She studied Annie and knew that she was married and had a child. But her husband was not a wanderer and stayed at home, taking care of his son. He looked average and she thought Mike would be successful. She didn't care about Annie's marriage or her family. If Annie screws up, it will be on her. Jill and Mike were married for almost ten years. In the first years, while on the road, he walked around a bit. It never bothered her too much. She did this herself. But in the last six years, ever since they both found out about each other's sins, they promised to save their marriage, 
and they both succeeded. But now Mike lusted after his financial advisor. Of course, she was a beauty, but still. Jill constantly dealt with sexy men using her on themselves, and only recently, with Dirk, she felt a strong temptation. She decided that a little activity on the side would not ruin their marriage. He loves his children, and so does she. They will both forgive each other. Maybe they will even be able to come to an agreement in a different way. Mike was one of the best sex Jill had ever had. It would have been difficult for her to give it up, but she had come to believe that lack of variety could be the spice of a bland life, at least in the sexual part of it. After dinner, Jill joked with Mike as they drove home. Do you want this, bitch? I saw everything, no matter how hard you tried to hide it from me. Sorry, we made a promise, and I will keep it. What if I let you go? Will you let me go? Why? Because of that asshole Dirk. I don't believe what I heard about his manhood in his pants. But maybe you know about it. Don't know. Just rumors, so to speak. No direct experience. But we will work together for two months and he will pursue me to show him off. And you'd like to see if it works. Maybe. If he turns out to be a loser, then it will only be a one-time thing. Jill, I don't agree. We have a family. And we will keep it. I will always love you the most. The other one won't interfere with this. Didn't interfere before. Anyway, I see what you're going to try for that woman, and she's married, Mike, and she has a child, not to mention my husband. Mike looked at her. You are offering something like an exchange. An eye for an eye. More like breasts for a man's instrument. But yes, you will have to make every effort to keep this a secret. I don't want girls to read about this in the newspapers or online. This will be my main condition for him. If he breaks it, I'll let you break it. I will say that you are a jealous husband who has many friends with guns. It's clear. Maybe. Let me think it over. Do you know what? It is quite possible that she will not give in to your efforts. Wouldn't that be great? No substitutions. The deal is concluded only for her. You think I can't have her? Nonsense. Prove it. I don't believe the words. She grinned. And again, I thought that men are so simple. That's how Annie became Mike White's target. After lunch, Annie drove back to her office. She wasn't as ignorant as the famous couple thought she was. She just knew how to put on a poker face in public. But she knew that Mike was excited throughout lunch. From where she stood, she saw it. But Jill did not. However, Jill seemed to know this. Annie wondered which one of them turned him on so much. But she decided that it must be her. Not his wife for ten years, no matter how sexy she is. Annie had to decide what to do with Mike. Keeping his account was a big step forward for her, but she didn't really need it that much. What did she need? Because if she was honest with herself, she knew she could accept Mike's offer. He was big, brash, and strong. Nick was also strong, but not big. He also didn't show too much personality. Another thing to consider was that Mike has a very large man tool, as she noticed during lunch. It was bigger than she'd ever had it, and she admitted to herself that she was curious. Then there was the idea that Mike was married to a beautiful movie star, and yet he wants her, an ego boost that Annie didn't need at all. On the other hand, she has a family and a wonderful husband. She didn't want to ruin it all. She also knew that if she started secretly dating Mike, Nick would find out about it, and it would destroy him. It will destroy the family too, she thought. The risk was too great, and she decided to refuse Mike. But Mike was persistent. As Jill's filming date approached, Mike worked hard on Annie. At first I did it subtly, then rougher. Annie was drawn to him like a magnet. It got to the point where she would get excited when he entered the room, but she would constantly turn him down. One day, she allowed him to kiss her after a business meeting in her office. The kiss was hot, but she pulled away and disappeared behind her desk. She was breathing heavily, and he was hard as a rock. He said, Let's do this, Annie. Nobody will know. We both really want this. She nearly cried with disappointment as she said, I made a promise to Nick, and I won't break it. I will not. Mike accepted it. He turned and left her office, although he was just as upset as she was. He returned home and took it all out on Jill. Jill relaxed and let it happen. 
Everything was amazing for her. She liked it when Mike took her like a savage, even though he was one. A savage under a thin layer of plaster. Perfect for her. When it was all over, they were lying on the bed, exhausted as if they had survived a hurricane. Jill said, I believe your financial advisor is keeping you on your toes to my advantage. I'm rooting for her, not you. But if she starts to upset you anymore, I might have to run away. She was making fun of him, and he knew it. I'll drive her away. She's just too devoted to her husband. If you think about it, it's admirable. Why not leave her alone? If you succeed, she will be a complete ass, and not just because of you. I can't leave it like this while you have sex with a stallion. I bet he's nothing special, but that won't stop you, right? I told you, if he's not too good, I'll only do it once. I may have to kill him, Jill. I can get so upset with Annie. Then wait until filming is over. We don't want to spoil the film, but his mysterious death right before its release will boost the box office. They giggled. Mike thought it over. He was pretty sure Annie wanted him as much as he wanted her. When they kissed, he felt her passion, and she felt his. She gasped when this happened. But he had no intention of forcing her. Jill was already getting ready to film when Mike had an idea and talked to Annie about it. Annie, I can't tell you how much I respect your dedication to your marriage. Because I know how much you want me. But I have an idea. Annie immediately became wary. Which? I want to throw a party in Black Rock. There will be a lot of fun people there. Remember when you said that your man's secret fantasy is Jamie Lee Curtis? So what? Now she is not at all the same as she was in the film he likes. Mike showed her a photo of the woman who played the second female role in the film, Jill. The role of the temptress. Lord, she looks just like that one. Who is this? This is Samantha Jordan. She's filming Jill's new movie and might be at the party. And what? Why is this? I can arrange for her to hit on Nick while dressed appropriately. She's 24, and Jill says she's ready for adventure. And then what will we do? Jill will have her co-star, Dirk. Later, when everyone had left, she would take him upstairs. Samantha will take Nick upstairs. We will stay with you. You want me to have sex with you? And he would have sex with a starlet? Good idea. Jill, she'll be out with that idiot, Dirk. I need... Well, we can move on while she's gone. Or it could just be the weekend. Everything is nice and cozy. Orgy. But Nick will refuse, and then he will understand that I set him up. He's not a very nice person when he's angry. Can he really hurt you? No. Not for me, Mike. Don't worry about it. No fights. It's much smaller. I may also have security. Actually, at these parties, I always have security. He goes to some dojo, you know. Mike just smiled. The conversation took place during lunch at a restaurant, and they were sitting in a dark booth. Mike is next to her. He pulled her towards him and kissed her as she turned around, placing her hand on his hard manhood. She did not remove it and kissed him in response. He thought he could take her right here, but it was too risky. She weakly pushed him away and whispered, Oh my God, Mike. Oh, damn. God. She pressed the button to call the waiter, and he immediately appeared, looked at them, but said nothing. Mike paid the bill, and they left. Annie returned from lunch in her car. The Black Rock party was scheduled to take place on Friday afternoon. Musical groups, many celebrities, mostly from films, possibly several ball players, and perhaps a wife, or maybe not. Annie was worried about how to invite Nick to the party and how to get him to make the trade. She knew him, and he didn't seem sexually flexible, at least as far as other partners are concerned. That's why they signed that promise. In addition, he is smart and will immediately understand what is happening. But if she tells him in advance, he will never go. That night over dinner, chicken roast, Nick's signature dish, Annie told him about the party. Nick, Mike, and Jill are having a party before she leaves for filming. There will be many celebrities there. We're invited. On Friday this week. Nick looked at her. He knew about her attempts to confront Mike. At some point, 
He himself was going to confront Mike, but decided to see what would happen. He must trust his wife. Mike isn't the only handsome guy around her, but Nick knew Mike might have made some progress. He had information from a source at her work. He also knew that she had turned Mike down more than once. I wanted to talk to you about Mike White. It seems to me that you are too close. He's after you, and from what I hear, he's close to getting you. It would be a disaster for you. I didn't do anything with him. He approaches me, and I say no. Well, maybe, but not a categorical no, right? And she never told me about it. Nick, I want to go to a party, and I want you to be there too. I'm not going to change. What I think is that you should leave him as a client, like the previous guy, only in reverse. Now he has sexual desire. Maybe he should take a gay guy. You have two of them in your company. I won't do this. I admit that he is a temptation, but I won't give in. I don't want to go to the party. There he will try his best to get you. Things could get ugly if he does. Nick, he is a grown guy, and there will be security there. I can take care of myself. No offense. Annie knew Nick went to the dojo. But I didn't know how long he'd been doing this, or how good he was at what they were doing there. She seemed to know about his deep-seated rage, but she didn't know just how strong it could be. After all, she didn't know how dangerous the party could become. Nick knew, and he resisted. However, as we learned at the very beginning, she insisted on her own. That Friday, Nick drove Travis after school to his parents' house in the neighboring county. They will pick him up on Sunday evening. The real reason Nick agreed to go to the party was because he wanted to settle the issue with Mike once and for all. He was tired of living in tension, and he was angry about it. Black Rock was Mike and Jill's ten-and-a-half-hectare country estate. It gets its name from the large, dark rock that juts out from the center of the lake on the estate. There was a large central mansion, a swimming pool, a tennis court, and a large ballroom built at the rear of the house. The party was scheduled to start at 7, Buffett, and open bar. As Nick was told, the clothes are casual. Annie came downstairs. She looked like a movie star. Her navy blue dress looked casual, in the same way a habanero pepper might seem innocuous. But both Annie and Pepper were the hottest things in the world. This did not reassure Nick. He was wearing slacks, a black and white silk shirt over trousers, and loafers. His shoes, while attractive, were functional. Seeing Annie, he said, Well, everything is clear. We'll stay home and have sex. This is exactly what the dress is for. Annie blushed. Do you think I look good? Nick didn't smile as he said, You look amazing, as you know very well. I'm just wondering who you dressed up for. For you, baby? Only for you. Then can we stay and have fun here? No. The main thing is to look good for all the movie stars and celebrities. You look great, too. Nick looked at her for a long time. He didn't believe her, but he smiled and walked over to the stereo. He had a song ready. Phil Collins. Live tonight. He pressed the play button. It was a song he often used to practice fighting. She had everything for this. Anger, rhythm, harmony, drum guiding blows when the time came. The music started playing and he pulled Annie into his arms. She was amazed. Sometimes she heard him humming this song, as if in a trance. But now he danced her around and then led her out the door. When it closed, energized by the drumming, he jumped into the air and kicked the branch of a tulip poplar tree in their yard. The whole way there was a song playing in his head. He was ready, if necessary. When they arrived at the house... There were parking attendants, but Nick told them that he would find a place for himself, although I still gave a tip. Then I drove up to the parking spaces and took one that allowed me to leave immediately. He also gave a tip to the parking attendant so that he would not force the car. Annie was concerned about Nick's behavior. The song that sounded outside the door seemed strange to her, although good. It was just alarming how Nick reacted. A kick from a branch made Annie blush. Then there's the parking story. It looked like Nick was preparing for battle. As they walked towards the main entrance, she asked him, Why did you do that? And the song, What For? It's like you're, well, I don't know, you're preparing for war. 
Yes. That's all he said. Annie turned to him, saying, Nick, let's have some fun today. Let loose. Have fun. I need a fun evening. Maybe you too. Just relax and let things take their course, okay? That's what I always do in certain situations, baby. And today, let's see how everything goes. If things go wrong, it could be the end of us, Annie. Everything flows one way or another. She turned pale. For some reason it seemed that he knew, but from where? She remembered how smart he was. Shit. Everything is flushed down the toilet before it even begins. But she remembered Samantha. Maybe all is not lost yet. They approached the entrance. Mike and Jill were alerted to the couple's arrival and that they were parking their car. Samantha was warned to arrive a little later, and they themselves met them at the door. Jill hugged Nick. She was beautiful, and she smelled good. Mike also hugged Annie, saying, Annie, you look so great. Mike then turned to Nick. You're Nick. We've heard a lot about you. Nice to meet you. He extended his hand to shake. Nick took it. Mike began to squeeze her like a man. The action was completely wrong. Nick responded in kind, but not hard enough to cause Mike permanent pain. Mike let go. Nick smiled at him and said, Nice to meet you, Mike. Judging by that shrug, maybe I haven't heard enough about you from Annie. This stopped the conversation for a second, as there was a drawn-out pause. Jill then said, Why don't we go inside and meet our other guests? They were introduced in a circle. There were four or five football players with women. Two of them are wives. There was Dirk and several other actors and actresses. There were two boxers and a lot of pretty women who were just there. It looked like a stocked pay pond. Nick wandered around. There was a buffet, and Nick got himself a salad. Annie was with one of the boxers, and Nick could see she was in sales mode. Fine. Nick took the seltzer. He had no intention of drinking this evening. Nick watched as Mike walked over to Annie and took her by the elbow. She turned to him and gave him a sexy smile. But then she said something that made him tense. Mike looked back, saw Jill, and waved to her. Jill disappeared around the corner and then appeared behind Nick. With her was the sexiest woman Nick had ever seen. She looked like Jamie, right down to her hair and build. Nick was stunned. Jill said, Nick, I'd like to introduce you to Samantha Jordan, my co-star in the film. She is a real talent. Nick was speechless for a moment. In his opinion, this woman made Annie and Jill look like witches. Finally, he said, Hello, you are awesome. Samantha is used to guys reacting to her, but she was surprised by Nick's reaction, which seemed real, and smiled at him. She knew her role for tonight. Jill said that the guy was ordinary, but Samantha, when she saw him, did not agree with this. He made an indelible impression on her. To her, he looked strong and robust. Jill saw all this and was amazed that Sam seemed to be completely smitten. She wasn't such a good actress that she faked her reaction. Sam came to her senses, took Nick by the elbow, and led him towards the pool for privacy. Sam had doubts. She didn't mind the idea of fucking Nick half to death, or vice versa. But he was nice. They talked a little. Nick asked her about films. She acted in several, but this was her biggest role. She asked Nick about his work, and he gave her the short version. At the same time, they continued to look at each other. The more they talked, the more Samantha wanted to sleep with Nick, and she definitely made it clear to him. No fake smiles, a look of pure lust, back and forth. Sitting there, they attracted attention. Meanwhile, Annie and Mike were dancing. Annie saw Nick introduced to Samantha, then she and Mike went to the dance floor. Two quick dances, and they went to the bar. Jill and Dirk came up. Annie asked Jill, And how did Nick react to Samantha? Jill felt a little awkward, and Annie noticed it. The alarm went off. She asked, What's the matter? Jill replied, I would say that they fell in love with each other. I've never seen anything like it. Annie was shocked. Where are they? I think by the pool. Annie went to look and saw the same thing as everyone else. Two people who are, at the very least, blown away. She asked Jill, 
is she playing so well or is she really falling in love? I fell in love and it's not just lust. Amazing. Looks like your plan to screw Mike is going to work. Today, he is all yours. Perhaps even for a long time, judging by them. Annie said, crap, shit. Oh my God. Samantha decided to tell Nick the whole truth. If they were going to be together, she didn't want it to be based on deception, so she told him that she was supposed to distract him, to be a consolation prize. Nick realized this. She said, Nick, I can't do this. I have strong feelings for you. They didn't plan this, so please call me if you feel the same way I do. Maybe we can do something about it. Well, you know, depending on what happens here. Nick said, I'll call you, Sam. Anyway, you are the woman of my dreams. I fell in love with you. Sam quickly kissed Nick and walked towards the parking lot. All the way, he looked after her. Her ass had a good rhythm, same as his fight song. He started hearing the song again and then got up to look for Annie. There was no way he was going to let her have sex today, except maybe with him. Nick found Annie dancing with Mike, a slow dance. The place for dancing has already been cleared. Only Annie and Mikey, Jill and Dirk, danced. A slow dance. Jill and Dirk kiss it on the dance floor. Annie and Mike did this less obviously. Annie had her doubts. Her husband, her love. She may have lost him, but she didn't believe it. Not really. And Mike's big tool was driving her crazy, rubbing against her stomach. Her ambivalence evaporated. Lust was winning the battle. She let Mike grab her ass and pull her towards his tool. He moved back and forth as if they had already had sex. Mike kissed her, sometimes tenderly, sometimes more insistently. Annie is lost. At that moment, Nick emerged from around the corner. He moved to the rhythm of his song. Two guards moved towards him. Nick ignored them. They were big guys, but he thought that they had only size and no ability to fight. Nick patted Mike on the shoulder. I'm cutting in. Mike replied, go fuck Sam. Today Annie is mine. I sent Sam away. She's gone, but Annie is free, and she's my wife, so fuck off. Mike walked away. He waved his hand to his guards. They came up. Nick looked at Annie and said, You set me up, woman. And if you stay here, we're done for. There will be no turning back. I do not believe in this. You won't leave our family because of one night. The only night. We bet? Because I won't let you have sex with this guy. And if I have to kill him, I will do it. This made everyone freeze. Mike could see that Nick was deadly serious but he couldn't understand how Nick could carry out his threat. He waved his hand towards the two guys. Annie froze when Nick spoke. Now she was afraid. There was no more sexual arousal. She said, I don't understand why you wouldn't agree to this. You really liked Samantha. You could have a great time and so would I. Nick replied, I can't allow this. We made promises. I do mine and you will do yours, whether you like it or not. At least this evening. If you feel like you need a new male instrument, we can divorce. But your little setup won't work here, Jill said. Mike, leave it alone. I won't have sex with Dirk. Leave it. I won't. This guy's talking nonsense. Mike turned to Annie. Do you want to leave with him? Annie replied, I have no choice. If I don't leave, something very bad will happen. Mike decided to get rid of the irritant and told the security guys, throw this guy out. Now, they moved towards him, one on each side, and they grabbed him by the hands. Nick watched Annie. She didn't move. She just looked. Then she stepped towards Mike. It took Nick less than ten seconds to disarm the two guards. He stomped on one's foot, turned, and punched the other in the throat. Then he turned to the first one and also hit him in the throat. They fell like big trees. Nick heard his song. The rhythm sounded in his head loud and clear. Composition on the air. Drum roll. Now nothing could stop him. Mike got burned. Mike felt fear like he had never felt before. Annie's soft-hearted husband is going to kill him. And in an instant he realized that he could not defend himself. But I tried. He swung at Nick, who stepped aside and laughed. Nick swayed to the music. He hit Mike in the crotch, 
and then hit him under the ear with the edge of his hand, and Mike fell. Everything happened very quickly. None of the women had time to react. They were stunned by the rapid disposal of the security guys and barely had time to move before Nick knocked the big Mikey down with a second blow. Nick obeyed the rhythm in his heed. Beating his rhythm, he raised his leg above Mike. But Annie realized that Nick was going to kill Mike, and she screamed, No, Nicky, no, Nicky, he's not worth it. Nick heard her. Not words, but a cry, primal fear, and he hesitated. Mike fell, but didn't pass out. He was a professional athlete, and an elite one at that. When Nick hesitated, Mike staggered to his feet and rushed to the pool, running for his life. He ran straight to the deep end of the pool and hit his head on the diving board. He didn't know how to swim. It didn't matter, though, because he was unconscious. Jill followed him. When she saw Mikey in the pool, she screamed. He was already underwater. He couldn't swim at all. Nick and Annie were next to her. Nick saw Mikey was drowning, took off his boots, dove into the water, and pulled Mike back to the surface. He dragged him to the side and pushed him out of the pool onto the concrete at the feet of the women. Nick climbed out of the pool in a flash. He turned Mike into the correct position and, with a few thrusts, squeezed the water out of his lungs. The water came out and Mike started coughing. Nick turned to Jill. Call 911. She turned and ran into the house. Mike panted, still coughing a little. Nick examined him, and when he was sure that Mike was out of danger, he left. Annie stared after him, feeling dead inside. Nick checked the condition of the two guards. They were alive and conscious. However, they needed medical attention. Nick was all wet, but he sat on the steps at the entrance and waited for the police and ambulance. Soon, two police cars and two ambulances arrived. Everyone was fussing around. Nick was waiting. He saw two security guys come out on their own, but they were put into an ambulance. Mike was soon carried out, but he was conscious and in no danger. However, he was taken away anyway. He waited. Jill came up to him and said, I'll give you dry clothes. Come with me. He followed her up the stairs. She pulled a T-shirt and a sweater from the closet in the master bedroom, both of which were too big for him. He moved towards the bathroom to change clothes, but Jill said, Change your clothes right here. I want to see what she gave up. Nick took off his shirt. His shoes were left somewhere by the pool. He took off his socks. Then he dropped his trousers. Only boxers remained. They were still wet. He looked at Jill. She smiled at him, and he took them off. Despite everything, he had an erection. Jill looked at him carefully and threw him some sweatpants. He turned around so she could see everything. Then he put on a T-shirt and sweater. Jill said, you don't have a drop of fat. You're too good to be true. What's Annie's problem? Now he was already wearing pants. He said, how should I know? Maybe we need a bigger man's instrument, maybe a famous athlete. But really, I think he just starved her out. He's a handsome guy, isn't he? Yes, that's for sure. You know, Nick, if you ever need reassurance, you can call me. Fine. I might need this. Of course, it could be Samantha. This girl is just a naughty girl. She will become a big star. She definitely brought out the stars in my eyes. She is the X factor for me. Hmm. So maybe Annie overestimated her capabilities. But you have a child. The main reason I stayed with Mike was the children. Besides, he's handsome. But on set, I was going to have sex with Dirk. And where is he? I haven't seen him since it all started. Yes, big action hero. He ran away. By the time the guards hit the ground, he was already in flight. I changed my mind about having sex with him. I think Mike will change his mind about having sex with Annie. But maybe you want to sleep with Sam. Certainly. As they say, what goes around comes around. He smiled and said, But if you ever need me, for any reason, I'll help you. Necessarily, I'll listen. She laughed. Let's see what happens to Annie. And with Sam. They returned downstairs as Annie emerged from the cafeteria where the police were stationed. She looked at the couple suspiciously and asked, What are you two up to? You look guilty. Jill replied, Look who's talking. We, well, I gave Nick a change of clothes, and I watched him change his clothes. 
You're an idiot, Annie. Jill left. A police detective came out of the room and called Nick. Nick sat down opposite two policemen. The guy was an older white man with the look of a cornered dog. The woman was elegantly dressed, young, and somewhat attractive. Stevens and Bright. Stevens took the initiative. Are you some kind of wizard? No, but I'm good at it. As a child, I was small. I had to study. Tell me what happened. Nick went through all the events as he remembered them. Two hours have passed since the rescue. But he remembered everything well. At the end, Bright asked, Were you going to kill Mr. White? Hard to say. My wife screamed and I went out of my rhythm. After that, I wouldn't do it. So you saved his life? I couldn't watch him drown. I was no longer in killing mode then. Besides, if he were dead now, I would have much more about bigger problems. You know he hit me first. Well, I tried. That's what everyone says. But that was after you defeated the security guys. Yes. Everything was as I said. Will you arrest me? No. The decision is up to the prosecutor. But the case will receive wide publicity. So, we don't know. The new prosecutor is a liberal, so we have no idea what she'll do. So I can go home? Yes. By the way, there are videos everywhere in this house. We are downloading it now. We will contact you if we have any further questions. Don't blame Mike White for trying to hit me. He's good for nothing. Bright laughed, but Stevens remained serious. Nick wasn't trying to be funny. Nick walked out onto the main landing where Annie was sitting on the stairs with Jill. He looked at her and said, I'm leaving. You can come with me or not. Annie stood up. She turned to Jill and said, Jill, thank you for an interesting evening. Jill smiled at her. I hope the next party will be a little more modest. I also hope that you both make peace. She looked straight at Annie. I was completely serious when I said what I said. He is awesome. In my own way. You were a fool. Samantha won't be such a fool if she gets the chance. Annie and Nick got into the car and Nick drove off. They returned home at 2.30 at night. Annie took a shower first, then Nick. She was already asleep when he came out, and two minutes later he fell asleep too. This Saturday, they both overslept. Nick got up around 10 and went to prepare breakfast. He was hungry. At the party, I only ate a small salad. Annie appeared while he was eating cereal. She was dressed in a short sleeveless dress of faded pink, knowing full well what Nick liked about this old thing. But Nick looked at her and went back to his cereal. A minute later, he said, I'm not that simple. And even if it did, it would just be sex. Annie smiled. That would be a great start. Just let me know. I owe you. And I'm ready to pay. And pay. And pay. Nick was crazy about her. But then I thought about Samantha. Annie was eating cereal, corn. Chewing, she spoke. I'm sorry that I tried to conspire against you. It was very wrong, and I hope that someday I will be forgiven. Until then, you can get whatever you want from me. She looked at him, up and down. In the last few hours, two movie stars and my very sexy wife have proposed to me. And yet, somehow I managed to resist. Which is more than you could have done if I had left you there with Mike. Mike, this is strength. Well, that's what I thought. But you beat him like a drum. I knew you did this in the dojo. But God, Nick, I'm very good at a lot of things, Annie. Maybe I just don't promote myself enough. I told you about my hobby. Yes, I told you. Can I go to the dojo with you? For what? She blushed. Because it's so hot. You... You can beat up anyone, and I can't help it. When I imagined you beating up those guys, including Mike, I almost reached a no-contact climax. I'm a puppet in your hands. She stood up and took off her dress. There was nothing underneath. He looked her up and down. I saw how excited she was. He stood up, walked around the kitchen table, and pointed to the floor. She immediately knelt down, realizing what he wanted, and pulled out his male instrument. The last one was not so easy because he was very hard. Then she set about it with a fervor she had not shown for a long time. He was impressed. He picked her up and carried her to the living room sofa, bending her over the back. She knew what to do. She squirmed in front of him. 
he spread her and plunged inside, rubbing the sensitive part of her private part against the back of the sofa with its rough upholstery. She reached the finish line and exploded like a TNT bomb. He continued to work on her, and she continued to pulsate, rising to the heights of climax. Then he came to the finish line, erupting like a volcano again and again. Nick knew she wasn't faking her new attraction to him. Not to say that she had been as cold as a fish before, but to be honest, their sex had been a little stagnant until that evening in Blackrock. Now she was so hot for him, and very, very hot for herself. Nick's thoughts raced between movie stars. He wanted Samantha badly. She may have become a threat to his marriage, but he also wanted Jill. He saw her when she looked at him naked, and he could have her. She saw how easily he handled her big, strong husband, and it turned her on. Just as Annie was aroused, he thought that he could have many women, just at what cost? Beating up their men? No, he couldn't do that, at least not often. He needed to think things through. Of course, not all women want a guy to beat up their man and fuck them. Of course, that wouldn't be civilized. Hmm. Annie caressed his manhood and then grinned, saying, Oh, we'll have so much fun. They spent most of Saturday in the grip of all-consuming lust. We had sex in every way we could think of. By ten o'clock at night, Nick was exhausted and couldn't do it anymore. Annie cheered, saying, I won the sex competition. You were a good competitor, but the woman has the advantage. She didn't say, but she thought, let's get the next one. He was still giggling as he fell asleep, but if he had heard her thoughts, he would not have been so complacent. Sunday started off modestly. Annie made pancakes and they used good maple syrup. Then Annie took the last pancake covered in syrup, lifted her skirt and rubbed the pancake all over her crotch, and then stuffed it into herself. She looked at him and smiled, saying, It seems like my eyes are hungrier than my stomach. Maybe you want to eat the last pancake? Nick ate the pancake and licked all the syrup. Annie was delighted. All it took to bring her Superman husband to his knees was to place some sweets in the right place. Nick's face was covered in syrup and crumbs when he finished breakfast. Annie pushed him onto the carpet and straddled him. She started licking the syrup off his face while rocking on top of him. She made it most of the way before they both reached the finish line. Collapsed on top of him, she smeared her face a little with syrup. Real Vermont maple, the very best. It tasted pretty funny, though. The rest of the day was less impressive. Both were tired and decided to take a walk in the local park and have a picnic. There were no more pancakes. When we returned home after our walk, Annie asked, are we okay about Friday? Nick looked at her and replied, no. Annie looked shocked. Why? We love each other. I know that. You plotted for both of us to break our promises. I need to understand everything. You know I have other options. Sam? I knew. Damn. Yes. You used your special knowledge of me to force me to break my oath just so Big Mike could fuck you. I guess it was pure lust. He constantly pestered me. He is hot. But don't you think that if everything had worked out the way you planned, we would eventually break up? No. Why? Lack of trust. Lack of respect. Annie lowered her eyes. I haven't... really... thought about all this. When Mike set his guys on me, I looked at you and you stepped towards him. I must have assumed they would throw me out. Oh, Nick. I... they were big and everything... Yeah, and when they threw me out, you and Mike would have sex, and the marriage would be over. I think I'd go with you, Nick, lust or not. I really doubt it. I'd say it's 50-50, and you know, it makes me feel humiliated. I will never let myself go through this again. I know what you can do, now I know. When I think about this, I feel uneasy. Annie? I don't want you to be loyal to us just because you think I'm the strongest animal in the jungle. I thought we loved each other. When you suggested that Mike might eliminate me as a nuisance, you stepped towards him. She sobbed and ran out of the room, upstairs. He didn't follow her. They both knew that what he said was true. Nick had a couple of beers and watched a baseball game. When faced with an important decision or a stressful situation, he usually thought, as if immersed in himself. Then he would surface and ask himself a few questions. 
Now his thoughts are on baseball. Only the game was great, and he became very interested. When it was all over, he asked the obvious question. What were his prospects? The first is to stay with Annie. The second is to date Samantha and see what happens next. Third, fuck Jill and then play in the field for a while. Or, he thought, he could do all three. Huh, but this is unrealistic, just a fantasy. And recently he was shown what happens when fantasies come true. Life turns to crap. Nick stood up and went upstairs to bed. Annie was already asleep. He kissed her forehead and fell asleep next to her. When they woke up, Nick kissed her again and said nothing more. They got dressed and Annie went to work. On Monday, Nick called Samantha and said he was going to try staying with Annie for a while. He asked her to call him when she returned from filming. She agreed. Then she said, Annie is a lucky girl, Nick. If she goes too far, please call. Please. Oh, I'll call. Nick called Jill. Jill, how is Mike doing? He will be discharged from the hospital today. His reproductive organs are swollen. I can't say I'm surprised. I'd like to talk to him if possible. Should he call me when he's ready? I'm not going to quarrel with him. I'll ask. I'll pick him up now. Later that day, Nick came to Mike and Jill's apartment in the city. Mike was sitting on the sofa. What do you need? Sorry for not getting up. I wanted to say that I decided to try to save my marriage. Of course, I'm not very pleased that you spent so much time and effort ruining everything, but I can understand. Famous man. Sometimes he behaves narcissistically. Yes, I'm actually sorry. You can say I'm an asshole. I was like that with Annie and with you. But I'm not always like this. Then why now? I found her to be super attractive, sexy and smart. So smart. Sorry. If she's still your consultant, can you get rid of her? Yes. Especially because you could very well kill me if I don't. It's bad for both of us. Especially for me. Something like that. Fine. Keep your word. I'll hold back. Jill, who was listening to them, said, I will make sure he is satisfied. I'll take it with me to the shoot and relieve you of excessive enthusiasm. Nick smiled. He's a lucky guy, and he knows it. Isn't that right, dear? I know. I just forgot for a while. By the way, Nick, thanks for getting me out of the pool. But why did you do this? I couldn't watch you drown. But if you watch the footage, you will see how I hesitated before diving. I don't know what to think about you. He pointed to his groin. It hurts, but at least I'm alive. Yes, not an easy situation. Look, I have nothing against you if you leave her alone. In fact, I don't want to offend Enya, but I may not stay with her. If I don't stay, you'll have a chance. But ask first. Why would you leave her? I don't understand, Mike said. Recent events, with this stupid plot to switch things up so you could fuck here. This is an important point in my thinking. Suppose I were not as good as I actually am. Then your guards would have kicked me out, and where would Annie have slept that night? I don't know the answer to this question. Jill said, I bet she would go home with you. She didn't want to leave the marriage. I wanted my stallion to fuck her here, letting you fuck Sam. A dream come true for you. Once Sam left, her plan went off the rails. But she stepped towards Mike. I saw this on video. You should watch it too. I actually think she might have come with me. But maybe not. I just don't know what to think. He was talking mostly to Jill now, but Mike intervened. When it comes to lust and sex, women are just as weak as men. I spent a lot of time and effort trying to get under Annie's skirt, and damn, she resisted. She wanted sex with me and very much, but she fouled it. She never went with me to some motel and didn't let me fuck her on her table like I wanted. We must give her credit, but I'm not an empty place. Nick looked at him. Okay, I give her credit. Maybe I'm overthinking. For a long time we were fine. But damn, it was so bad. Jill said, give her time. By the way, Sam asked about you. Well, you know what's wrong with you? I told her what happened there. Though she was there ready to climax over the phone. It's about Annie's chances. What's the matter with women? Is it like during the cavemen? Beat up your husband, get your wife? This is so crazy. Darling. I think it's programmed in the genes. 
As soon as a woman finds out that you are the arbiter of destinies, she wants you. This happens to Annie too, right? Yes, me too. She looked at him as if she was ready to drag him upstairs right then and there. Mike growled, but he could barely move. Nick said, I better leave. Jill, you are one of the options I've been considering, but I have to talk to Annie. Finally, Nick left, with palpable excitement. When Annie returned from work, Nick immediately took her upstairs while Travis was watching a video in the TV room. Nick threw Annie onto the bed and fucked her hard until she climaxed. He didn't think about satisfying her, but she still reached a strong climax. Annie was breathing heavily as he stood up from her and said, Hello? How was your day? Nick laughed and so did she. She was so smart. He said, I went to Mike and Jill. Jill? Turn me on. Without even touching. But you got me, Annie asked. What's for dinner? Pizza. Then fuck me again. He agreed. This time they were in no hurry. It was very pleasant for both of them. After dinner, Travis went to his room to study and Annie asked, Are we fine? Because I'm sorry that I react to the fact that you are an alpha male. I can't do anything about it. I guess Jill does too. Yes. And now you beat her husband. Former alpha male. How is he, by the way? He'll get better. His reproductive organs were swollen, but Jill will take him with her to the film shoot. Cute. She nurses him, and he won't have sex with that idiot Dirk. There was an order between Annie and Nick that Nick liked. He got it when he wanted and how he wanted it. But in some strange way, he was tired of it. She was so submissive. Six weeks later, Jill and Mike returned and invited Annie and Nick to Black Rock. Another party with the cast and crew of the film. Nick was ambivalent. Annie, too. But they decided to go. It was a movie party. No athletes except Mike. Annie was driving, and she asked the valet to park the car. Jill met them at the door, and Samantha came right behind them with a dark-haired, brown-eyed, handsome man. Jill said, Welcome? Sam, you know Annie and Nick. Guys, Sam is Vince Cap. He is also starring in the film. Vince said, Well, unless they cut me out during editing. Sam assured, They won't cut it out, big boy. Women need to be attracted, too. They all went inside. Nick found himself jealous of Vince and Sam. Mike met them at the buffet. She and Nick shook hands. This time there was no male competition. Mike gave Annie a rather chaste hug. Annie and Nick began to circulate in the crowd. This crowd consisted of the film's crew, including director Hector Salas and financier Blake Davis. The two were busy with themselves. Nick was not at all eager to approach them. And just like that, Hector began to pursue Annie. He told her that she should pass the casting, and then she could star in the film. Annie laughed. Hector hugged Annie, but she soon pushed him away. He was a big guy with big hands and a big nose. Not very pleasant to look at. Impudent. Nick knew Annie wouldn't have any problems with him. The party continued for some time. Nick drank beer and ate kebab. Annie was talking to Vince by the pool. She seemed to attract attention from all sides. Samantha and Jill approached Nick, who was watching Annie. Sam asked, Are you worried? No. I believe we have reached a new agreement. How are things going with you and Vince? Jill replied, He is a sexy man, and she was all alone. Nick looked at Sam. She nodded. That's pretty much how it was. He is a rake. He'll try to hit on Annie. In fact, this is exactly what he is doing now. Nick said, Well, she is independent. If she screws up, we're screwed. But I believe that we will be okay. Sam said, I can't say I'm glad to hear this. Jill chimed in. Me too. Nick laughed. Two super sexy movie stars. Crap. They separated. Nick walked over to where Annie was still talking to Vine. It seemed to Nick that Vince seemed to slightly wedge himself into her space. He took her hand and asked, So, Vince, what's it like to make a movie? Vince replied, I was just telling Annie that this is very hard work. Not at all romantic. Well, there is, Sam. 
Vince smiled. We must admit that this is so. Nick led Annie aside where Mike stood alone. He didn't mix well with the movie people, except for the two stuntmen. Annie asked, How was it on the set? You went, right? Yes. Lasted two weeks. But it wasn't that much fun. Just to be with Jill. I left when filming of her stallion ended. I didn't have to kill him. Nick said, This is good. Things could get messy. The three of them laughed. Dirk was on the other side of the pool talking to a young woman who looked fascinated by him. Mike said, This is one of the extras who was brought in late. She probably hadn't seen him before. Looks like he's making progress. Annie said, I heard from an anonymous source that he has very great dignity. Mike looked at her and she replied, No, this is not Jill. Annie had a couple of other clients who might be dating Dirk. Nick said, Great dignity? What is this? Annie replied, I wasn't that inquisitive. Nick nodded. Fine. The evening continued with some people using the pool, but not Mike. The most interesting thing for Nick was when Samantha came out in a bikini and started swimming. In fact, it was interesting to almost the entire male cast of guests. When Sam appeared and dove into the pool, Jill was standing next to Nick. She muttered, Braggart. Nick said, You can take a swim too, but some guys can get overly excited. And I'll watch. Jill stared at Nick. Then she smiled at him and said, I will do it if you do it too. Annie heard this, looked at Nick and said, Well, now is the time to speak or remain silent. Just no prolonged physical contact. Nick and Jill went upstairs. Nick didn't have swim trunks, but there were several different sizes available for the guests. Jill tossed Nick a black thong. He tossed them back and chose an old-fashioned pair of swim trunks. She gave him blue ones instead. Compromise. Jill undressed and put on a bikini. Nick watched with interest. She was beautiful. She nodded towards her swimming trunks. Nick took off all his clothes and tried to get into his swimming trunks but watching Jill began to excite him. Help? she asked. No, Nick answered. Please do not. I have enough problems as it is. He squeezed himself into his swim trunks and lost his hardness in the process. The two of them went downstairs. Jill plunged into the water, took three steps, and dived in next to Sam. Nick was impressed with the dive. There was a diving board, and Nick knew how to use it. He jumped took a few short steps, and performed a perfect somersault into the water, emerging to applause. One of those who applauded was Annie. She knew that every woman present wanted him, including the movie stars in the pool. But he was hers, at least for a while. Vic approached Annie as she watched Nick flirt with Sam and Jill and said, You are as beautiful as those two. She looked at him. He was very handsome. Big and beautiful, she said, Thank you, but your mission to get me will not succeed, and in the end, you won't like what happens. With feigned disappointment, he smiled charmingly. He was definitely an actor. Gil, Sam, and Nick left the pool. Jill said, There are suits upstairs for anyone who wants to swim, and on the tennis court we will have dancing to music with a DJ. Sam and Jill, along with Nick, approached Annie and Vince, Vince openly stared at women. Then, to Annie's surprise, he started staring at Nick. Annie asked Sam, What does it mean? And Sam laughed. He plays for both teams. Interesting guy, I'll tell you. Maybe you should keep an eye on Nick. Annie giggled. If Nick leaves with him, I'll get to Mike. And perhaps to both of you, too. Jill and Sam, still wet, moved closer to Annie, as if some secret signal had passed between them. They began to hug her, one on each side, until she broke away. She sighed. Just kidding, girls. Kidding. Both women looked so disappointed until they started laughing. Nick watched all this, and his swimming trunks could not hide his reaction. All the women noticed this immediately. Jill said, Oh, God, Nick, what is this? Nick replied, You know, you saw it. Then Sam said, But I didn't see it. Now it's my turn. She grabbed Nick's hand and pulled him inside and up the stairs. 
Annie followed them. She was still dressed, but wet from the hug. Plus, she needed to protect Nick from the predatory Sam. If this is still possible. She thought that this was all almost out of control, and the threat was only growing. But it turned out that she was not so against it. Right behind Annie was Jill. She was more than curious what would happen. The four of them found themselves in the master bedroom, where Nick had previously shed his clothes. Annie said, We have to get out of these wet things. Jill let out a cry of glee, and her top fell to the floor. And before she had even pulled her bottom off, Sam was already naked. Annie took longer as she was wearing a dress and panties, but not much longer. Nick became a victim of sexual overload. He stood there, stunned by the way the women looked at each other. He understood that almost anything could happen, but he did not know what he wanted. Strictly speaking, this was a lie. He understood perfectly well that he wanted to fuck all three of them, and first of all, Sam. But this did not fit in with his position on sexual morality in marriage. But this position has already changed a lot. Despite all the prohibitions, Jill came up behind him, knelt down and pulled his trunks down, his tool popping out. She reached out and brushed his hands. Sam moved closer to Annie, pulled her close and kissed her. Annie answered. But then Jill came out from behind Nick. She said, no more promiscuity. The party continues, and I am the hostess. And I won't let you three have sex without me. She tossed Sam and Annie dresses for the pool. Short. I put one of them on myself. Nick was still naked, and the women were looking at him. Annie asked, How do we dress him? Jill replied, Why should we let him wear clothes? Sam said, Because we want it for ourselves if it comes to that. We have to cut off Vince and those young girls. Annie said, I didn't agree to anything. She tossed Nick his usual swimming trunks and a T-shirt. Both others groaned. They all went down to the tennis court where the dancing was taking place. Mike walked up to Nick and said, Have you already fucked all three? No. Although, Lord, we changed clothes right there in your bedroom, sorry. But there was nothing special. Jill stopped everything, Mike. I couldn't stop myself. I guess I'm weak. Mike said, I am ready to exchange with you for tonight. Nick looked at him. No. That sounds interesting. But no, Jill is a real tigress. I just cannot. Oh, shit. My mother raised me wrong. Mike laughed and then said, Well, at least I'll dance with her. Sam, too. Mike walked up to Annie and took her to the floor to dance the jitterbug. Annie looked at Nick, who waved at her. The crowd thinned out. Jill danced with Vic. Samantha walked up to Nick and simply led him onto the dance floor as the DJ switched to slow music. Nick pulled her close. Sam whispered in his ear, I think the time has come for us. Mike has Annie. He will turn her on, and Jill will try Vic. This was the ultimate test of his toughness. Moral fortitude, too. He passed one test, but failed the other. The whole party looked like a bunch of teenagers playing spin the fuck. The slow music ended, and Nick and Sam started dancing to the medium-fast music. Sam danced really well. She slid around Nick. Nick slid over her body and began to harden again. She answered him the same. They disappeared into each other. Meanwhile, Mike, as predicted, turned Annie on. At first he held back, remembering the last party. But Annie got excited, and Nick waved her through, allowing her to go to the floor with Mike. Jill and Vic weren't so excited. Jill was more interested in the other two couples. Vic was fine, but Jill was interested in Sam and Nick. It was like a depraved morality game. She knew that if Nick left with Sam, Annie would go upstairs with Mike. But I didn't know what would happen. And she didn't know what she would do if they split into pairs. She thought she would join Mike with Annie first, maybe then to Sam and Nick. Vic remained out of work. Then, at the prearranged time, DJ Mick took a break. It was unpleasant for him to do this because he was interested in the events on the dance floor. But... Union rules and all that. I'll be back in ten minutes, he said quietly, and went to get a beer. Trade union rules. There were only six of them left, plus the staff. Everyone approached the table between the pool and the dance floor. There were a few sidelong glances. No chatter. Lots of tension. Jill said, 
I was wondering which of you I would join first. This statement was like a bomb dropped on the table. Annie held Mike's hand. Nick and Sam were sitting on the love seat with her legs resting on his lap. Jill was sitting on Vic, but it was as if he was just her chair. He felt left out. Exactly. Annie looked at Nick, and she saw that Sam would take him if she wanted. And it was at that moment that Annie decided that Nick was the only man for her, and that she did not want to share him. She stood up, dropping Mike's hand. Swaying slowly, she walked over to Nick and leaned down to kiss him. Nick kissed her back. Sam was still on his lap and heard Annie whisper to Nick, It's time to go home, my love. Enough excitement to keep us going until next time. Sam stood up from Nick. Nick groaned, but Annie pulled him towards her and wrapped her arm around his waist. She looked around and said, I'll take this man home, where he belongs. On the way out, Nick took the keys. He was in a trance-like state, so Annie drove the car. When they arrived home, Annie immediately took him to bed and removed his skimpy clothes. She covered him with her body and took possession of him. They made love slowly and sensually. Nick didn't think about Sam. He was only here, with his wife. Everyone admits weakness sometimes, and at that moment we rely on others to make sure everything is okay, and we're lucky if we have someone who can do it.